Let's talk about a cavity's perspective. We're going to start with sight. You notice your guinea pig's eyes are on either side of their head. This allows them to see about a 340 degree range. This is very important because they are prey animals, so they need to be able to see what's coming around them from all sides. But there is a downfall to this. It means they have poor depth perception, meaning a guinea pig cannot really understand how far away something is. Let's say you have your guinea pig up on your bed and they're looking over the edge of your bed. We know it's way too far for them to jump, but they're not going to understand how high up they are. That is one important thing that you need to know. Your guinea pig does not know how high up it is, so if it jumps, it's going to hurt itself, possibly seriously injure itself or kill itself. And it didn't mean to, it just didn't know. So you are responsible for keeping them safe. You cannot leave them up on tabletops, counters, desks, or bed unattended. They will jump and they won't have known why it wasn't a good idea. Guinea pigs can see color. They can differentiate between green, blue, and red. And they also see about 33 images per second, which is very important for them because when they're turning their heads, they can continuously see images and it doesn't blur. Like when us humans, when we turn our head, things kind of blur together until we stop. For guinea pigs, as they're turning their head, everything is pretty much in focus which again, they're prey animals, so they need to see what's going on around them. Now for sound for your guinea pig, it's proven that they can hear up to 33,000 hertz, which humans can hear up to 20 to 20,000 hertz. So a guinea pig can hear very high frequency sounds. That's why they react negatively to high pitched noises and they can get all scared just from one little creak or anything like that. It's very loud to them. It frightens them, whereas we may think like, oh, that wasn't very loud, but to them it's very loud and jarring. So you need to talk to your guinea pig in a soft voice, not high pitch or anything like that. Now a guinea pig for smell, they're kind of somewhere between a human and a dog, so they smell much better than us. That's why you notice they always um, sniff around their cage, sniff out food before they eat it, and it's really important that they know your smell because they're going to smell you long before you go to pick them up and they're going to associate you with someone safe. Now for a sense of taste, guinea pigs are herbivores and they're ranked one of the animals with the greatest taste buds, all herbivores are. Whereas something like a cat only has 473 taste buds, humans have over 9,000 and guinea pigs are at around 17,000. So that is one reason to give your guinea pigs a lot of variety of vegetables because they're going to find it very interesting and fun to have new tastes. Now a sense of touch. You'll notice that your guinea pig has whiskers on their nose and if you've ever accidentally touched them, they'll usually shake their head. Those whiskers are used to navigate their surroundings, especially in the dark. They're kind of like little sensors, feelers. You should never cut your guinea pig's whiskers. It is very important for them to know how to get around in the dark. I'm going to talk about a couple illnesses slash diseases that are common in piggies, especially pet store pigs. The first one is going to be a URI, an upper respiratory infection. Some signs of that are going to be they're not eating, they're not drinking, they're losing weight, they're going to have shallow labored breathing, they're going to have discharge from their eyes or nose. They might have diarrhea, they might be coughing or sneezing a lot. They might not have all of these signs, but they will have a couple of those and it's very important to get your guinea pig to a cavy savvy vet. Not all vets look after small animals or know how to properly look after them, so you need a vet that specializes in guinea pigs. A URI is very important because by, time, by the time you find out that your guinea pig is sick, they could have been sick for a week already. Guinea pigs are prey animals, so they hide their illness for as long as possible because in the wild, if you're looking sick and ill, you're going to be the first thing to be picked off. So as soon as you notice your guinea pig is sick, it's pretty darn serious. It could be too late. Another common illness that guinea pigs from pet stores especially will have is mites. These are microscopic. You cannot see them with your own eye. 
Some signs are excessive itching. If they are scratching all the time in one spot, they'll have scabs around them because they're scratching so hard because the little mites are eating at their skin. So they're going to hurt themselves that way. And there's hair loss. So if your guinea pig has any of these signs, it, it is most likely mites. And the treatment for mites is something very simple. There's something called Ivomec or Ivermectum. It is a cattle drug that is poured on to cows to get rid of mites and parasites. So you can use that for your guinea pigs safely. I'll give you a link down below to guinea links. They actually have the best medical site that you can go on and check out anything about your guinea pig that you're wondering about and they show a conversion table of how much Ivomec you would give your guinea pig based on its weight because for cows it's a lot but for a guinea pig it's like this teeny little drop. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is eye injuries. These can be common if you have guinea pigs housed together that are kind of rowdy. It could be an accident from fighting or it could be from hay pokes. Now if your guinea pig has an eye injury their eyes going to be sunken in they're going to be squinting, there's going to be discharge, crustiness around the eye. It is very important to get immediate care for your guinea pig because they could lose their eye, they could go blind. So that is something to look out for. I always look at my guinea pig's eyes every morning to make sure everybody's eyes are full, clear, and that not cloudy, anything like that. I'm going to talk a little bit about bladder stones, kidney stones, whatever you want to call them. These can be common in pigs and one of the main culprits is too much calcium or oxalates. I would avoid feeding things such as spinach, I don't use it at all, or too much parsley. Things that are high in calcium can cause bladder stones in guinea pigs and you'll know they have them most of the time because there may be blood in the urine and when they are going to the washroom they may squeak in pain or kind of arch their back and that needs to be taken care of right away as well because the little stone could get lodged and then it could stop all urine output so that's something very important to go to the vets for. Another thing that is very preventable that guinea pigs could get is scurvy. We all know that our guinea pigs cannot produce vitamin C so we have to provide it for them healthy pellets are going to have some vitamin C naturally put inside them but to ensure that your guinea pig gets all the vitamin C they need daily I would suggest you feed them green pepper so I use the green pepper which works great because all my guys enjoy it I wouldn't use vitamin C drops in the water it kind of mucks up their water changes the flavor so your piggy might not drink as much and you don't know how much vitamin C your piggy is actually getting and vitamin C in the water degrades pretty quickly because the light and the air is getting to it. Now let's talk about bumblefoot. That is when your cavity gets an open sore on the bottom of their feet it can get infected and it is very hard to heal. Their feet are very soft on the bottom. Take a look and feel it. It's very soft. One of the most common ways a piggy gets bumblefoot is if they are housed on a wire bottom cage. Under no circumstances is that okay to put a piggy on a wire bottom cage. They're going to cut their feet. Their little feet could slip through the holes of the wires. They could break a foot, break a leg. And can you imagine all day walking on top of a rough surface? You're going to get cuts and then your cuts are never going to heal because they're just going to be keep reopening. It's terrible. I hate seeing cavies on wire bottom cages. They're poor little feet. And another thing that can cause bumblefoot is if they are in dirty cages where they're standing on their own urine and feces. It just kind of eats away at the bottom of their foot and creates these big open sores that just can never heal. So that's very preventable. Keep a clean cage and never, never keep your cavity on a wire bottom cage.